Yes, 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 people. I'm back. Second one of the day because Jordan Henson's had the second part of his interview. Can you believe it? And he's discussed even more topics that need to be discussed today. So, we are back again. There's no other news to really talk about. So, it is really just this. I mean, the only real news is the fact that the club, that the new Anfield Road in stand, the company that were doing that have officially went into administration. So, the club are now looking for other companies to finish the work which now shouldn't take as long as it shouldn't take that long to find the new company for it so hopefully the way can get back on the way with it but we're not really here to discuss that we are here to discuss the situation with jordan henderson so if you're new here and you're not already make sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button and turning on that notification bell so you don't miss any more content right earlier on today we discussed the first part of jordan henderson's interview discussing why he left Liverpool and the situation around him joining Saudi and the LGBTQ and the stand. Let's get these headphones off, man. I don't need these on, man. I do not need these on. So, what are we discussing this time? What are we discussing this time? Well, FSG are uh, mentioned by Mr. Brian. And let, 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 let's just start off with this. Let's just start off with this. Um, he's asked about the ownership and... Jordan Henderson says, Honestly, I can only have positive things to say about the ownership. They've been so good, it's plain for everybody to see. When they came in and took the club over to where it is now and what they've achieved in that time, pretty much the same length of time as I've been there, has been remarkable, really. These guys are smart people. They know what they're doing. They're not a club that's going to go and splash 100, 200, 300 million on a player. You're wrong there, Jordan. They know what they need, and sometimes in my situation, that's not nice at times. But it's the best thing for the club. It's the best thing for the team. So, let's just start off with this, Mr. Brian. Let's start off with this. Um, the ownership and the people in charge do know what's best for the football club. They do. So then I'm going to take you back to the summer of 2021. When the ownership decided that you shouldn't get your new contract, why did you vilify them? Why did you vilify the staff? Why did you vilify the recruitment team? Why did you start suggesting you were going to get moves? Why did you... Spin all the PR to get a move if you knew that the owners had the best thing in mind. The, the owners are, you know, the, they're the best thing for the club. They know what they're doing. If they disagree with giving you a new contract and you believe you had Liverpool's best interests, then why did you push to get a new one signed? It counteracts itself, Jordan. It, it, it's like bashing heads. It doesn't make sense. This is the issue with these interviews. You have counteracted yourself. You have went back on it time and time and time and time and time again. This is the issue. He then goes on to say that he saw Jürgen a few days ago and that he's really happy with the transfer window and he loves his team. Which tells you the players that left, he probably wanted to go and the players that have come in, he probably wanted to sign. So they'll have a plan. It's not as if they just went up last minute. Oh, Jordan's going and Fabinho's going, Milner's going. There's always a plan. There's always a strategy, especially with this ownership. Did you see the little sly digs again? It's sly digs from Henderson. It's sly. It's underhanded. The players that left, he probably wanted to go. We know that, though, Jordan, because he asked you to stay. He had talks and said you can stay. He didn't want you to come. You couldn't accept the role he was offering. That's the issue. That's the problem. Don't try and vilify Klopp. Don't try and suggest Klopp pushed you out the door. Because that wasn't the case. You asked for it. You couldn't accept the bit part role that you were offered. So you moved. And that is fine. I have no issue with you doing that. But then you can't try and rewrite history and rewrite narratives. That can't happen. And you've done that too much. And then he goes on to say that FSG... He's felt they've always had the best interest of the club at heart. They never take any money out of the club. They invest it all back into the club, whether that's with the stadium, training ground, players. But at the same time, they're clever in what they do with money. They're not going to go and spend a ridiculous amount of fees and wages on players because it'll upset the structure. As much as I tried with certain players in the past, they will stick to their principles and it has worked. So, again, John, let, let's address a misconception here. Let's address a misconception. FSG, yes. They don't take money out, and all the money that goes into the club is recycled from what the club makes. The issue, though, Jordan, is you've praised two things there, the stadium and the training ground. Now, I'm not expecting you lot to know how FFP works. I'm not. It, it, it's a very complicated thing, but the big thing about financial fair play is the ownership are allowed to invest as much money in the football club 
for when it comes to infrastructure. So, let's say, upgrading your straight, your stadium, or, I don't know, let's just say, for a random sort of thing, buying a new training ground, you know, that those sort of things. The ownership can pay for that out their own pocket. But no, we don't do that. Liverpool Football Club has had to pay to move. Liverpool Football Club has had to pay to upgrade their stands. And that has directly come out of the fund that is available for transfers. Can you see why we might have ended up in this situation then? But no, they always had the best interest of the club at heart. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that they had the best interest of the club at heart when they done Project Big Picture, when they done the Super League, when they tried to trademark the word Liverpool, when they tried to up ticket prices to £77, when they tried to furlough staff, they always had the best interests at heart. Do you understand how stupid that sounds now? Because they didn't. Because they don't. The interest they have at heart? Money. And they're businessmen. That is to be expected. But the rewriting of history and the rewriting of narratives cannot be allowed to continue. It can't. They have not had the best interest of the club at heart. Because the best interest of the club at heart are keeping the fans happy. And the fans, you piss them off seven separate times. Seven separate times. That isn't having the club's best interests at heart. So what are we doing here? It then moves on to say how he omitted he voiced his opinion on signing Jude Bellingham. And then the fact that the club walked away. Maybe the own, maybe not to the owners, but you can probably think of certain players that I might have tried for in the past, especially recently. That's obviously Bellingham, which looking back now, he's on fire. So I might have thought that we should have just paid the money. But in the end, they have a structure, they have a plan. And if it doesn't fall within that, then they're not going to change for it because it has a knock-on effect. It's great to sign these amazing players with loads of wages and it's amazing for everyone. But in the end, you'll then have different players coming and wanting different money. You've got players within saying, well, I want... You know, it causes a lot of different issues within... Almost like, you know what it's like, Jordan? You know what it's like? It's it's almost like a thirty-two, a 31-year-old, a 32-year-old rocking the boat and throwing the structure out the window because he wanted a new contract with bigger money. I can't think of who possibly done that, though. I cannot think of who possibly done that at this football club. But you're right, FSG won't bend unless the player runs a PR campaign, a smear campaign. That's when they bend. That's when they change their structure. That's when they change their plan. It's gross ignorance. It is gross ignorance from Henderson. And it's crazy. It's crazy that people aren't clocking onto it. It's cra- It's absolutely mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And then, and then, Jordan, former captain of Liverpool Football Club, has now also started buying into the Mohamed Salah stuff. So... Henderson said that while he has not discussed Salah's future with the player, he backed him to be a strong addition to the, to the division should they move materialise. I haven't spoken to him about the situation. Obviously, I spoke to him briefly over the past week or two in terms of how of he was asking how, if I was okay, everything was all right, how I'm settling in, the normal sort of stuff. I've sort of left him with this. He'll have everybody ringing him and texting him and things like that. So I've sort of left him to. I don't really know what. I don't really know exactly what's going on. I just see what's being said in the media in terms of the bids going in and things like that. It'll be interesting to see what happens because he's an amazing player, an amazing guy, and whatever happens, he'll have a big impact, whether that's at Liverpool or in the Saudi League, whatever it may be, whether that's now, in the future, or whenever it may be. He's a fantastic addition to any team. That's actually the best part of it. Yes, he bought into it. Yes, he was, yes he didn't shut it down. I'm not expecting to shut it down, but... It's the best thing he said across two interviews, and it's not very good in that sense. So what are we doing here, Jordan? I don't know who authorised this interview. I don't know who suggested it was a good idea, but this has blown up in Henderson's face catastrophically. Catastrophically, it's blown up in Jordan Henderson's face. He's shot himself in the head with the LGBTQ stuff. He's ruined all the goodwill with Liverpool fans in terms of how of revealing how he exited and trying to blame everyone else for that. And now, in this one, he's rewriting history with FSG. He's trying to suggest that FSG are perfectly good owners, blatantly ignoring the major cock-ups they've made, and having gross ignorance, constantly praising the structure, praising the structure, praising how they're run, this, that, and the other, and having the gross ignorance to not understand that he was the one who broke the structure in the first place and led to the situation that we were in last season. It's crazy. It's absolutely mental. It's mental. 
it it's so it went so horribly wrong for Henderson this. It went so horribly wrong. And it's tarnished a legacy for many fans. I've I've spoken to a couple of people today. many people are hurt by what he said, many people are confused, many people are shocked, you know, and rightly so. It's embarrassing from him. It's absolutely embarrassing from him. And you know what? Good riddance. Good rid- if this is how he wants to redirect the narratives now that he's gone, now that there won't be any ramifications because he's not in the Prem, good riddance, because it just goes to show that the ego of Jordan Henderson was priority. The ego of Henderson was priority. And that's not a good look. That is not a good look. But look, people, this one is a bit shorter than the other one because this interview is a little bit shorter. But I'm going to leave it there. Second part of the interview, mine's still blown with Jordan Henderson. It's absolutely crazy. But if you're new here and you're not already, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any more content. I'm going to love you, I'm going to leave you in a bit, in a bit, in a bit, to raw.